Hello! Welcome to Brainspell, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and today we're going medieval. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Knights, crusades, middle age executions, all the good stuff you expect from a video like this. Well, the story's a little bit different from that. More so the story of a little farmer who had a problem with his local council. Yes, this story is pretty damn hilarious, and I'm very much looking forward to telling you the tale of the castle on the farm. A man named Robert Fiddler, yes, this is his face right here, he owned a farm called Honeycrook Farm back in 2001, based in Surrey. Right about there. Yeah, right about there. Who would have thought Surrey of all places would be the staging ground of one epic battle? <laughs> yeah, this is really starting to sound a bit medieval to you now, isn't it? So, as a farmer, you'd expect Robert to be busy doing farming things. Well, he spent most of his days working on a little side project. And when I say a little side project, I mean a passion project. Something that he could really get off the ground. Yes, so the farmer, in his spare time, decided to build a bloody castle on his farm. That isn't a joke, he actually decided to build a two-story mock Tudor castle on the site of an old cowshed. You may be asking, surely someone can't just build a castle anywhere they want to? I mean, there has to be certain planning regulations, right? Well, you'd be correct, because Robert Fiddler had to seek planning permission from the local council before he was legally allowed to construct his castle. Robert Fiddler contacted Banstead and Rygate Borough Council in order to seek planning permission to build his castle. And when I say build his castle, what he specifically asked for was to renovate the cowshed into a new home. Come on, you gotta give the guys some credit for at least being a little bit sneaky about the whole thing. And unsurprisingly, the council said no. But the main reason behind this was the fact that the farm itself was based on an area of land, what's called a green belt which means that getting planning permission on a green belt area to protect the environment is extremely difficult. This left him with a bit of a predicament on his hands. He had no planning permission in which to build his big ass castle, but he was determined nonetheless. How does one go about construction in such a situation? I know, bend the law to your whim. UK land and planning law isn't the most straightforward thing. And there are multiple ways in which you can get planning permission for such a project. One of which is known as the four year rule. A builder or developer can retroactively apply for planning permission, provided they can prove that the building has been constructed for four years, and during that time, that building has been used and maintained. As far as I could tell, that was the general gist of things anyway. And this is exactly what Robert Fiddler relied on when he did the exact same thing. Robert's plan was to build his castle, wait four years, and then retroactively apply for the planning permission. Seems perfect, right? Well, you might expect a few issues when somebody's building a massive castle. In fact, his exact words were as follows. There are two ways of getting planning permission. You can either apply for it, which I did, and they refused to process my planning application, so I took the alternative. If I build the house and they don't see it for four years, then it becomes legal, and that's the way I went about it. And yes, he wasn't wrong. He could build his castle, and that would be all great and dandy. But in those four years, if somebody found that castle, they could, theoretically, take legal action to force him to take down the castle, because he had no planning permission. So, the obvious answer here is to hide your construction for four years, and then apply for planning permission. How did he get away with this? Robert Fiddler, being a farmer by trade, seemed to have a lot of hay bales on the go. You know, just sitting there in a big mountain for four years. Yes, Robert Fiddler decided to use the massive hay bales on his farm in order to construct, effectively, a mountain of hay to cover up his building. I mean, at the very least, that's a big dedication right there. And one thing I realised when looking up this video is by looking at pictures of the property itself, it doesn't even seem that big of a project. I mean, he could have gone completely out there with his ideas, but decided to have something like this. I remember thinking back to when I was about five or six years old, I used to draw my dream house and there'd be, you know, 600 rooms and each room would be specifically for something really pointless, like there would be a room full of jelly beans 
There'd be no reason behind it, just it, it was the Jelly Bean Room and, and that is what the room is. So I would have absolutely have loved for him to have built something like that so he can just have rooms for the sake of having rooms. I mean, that would be a baller move to play right there. Anyway, the castle was built and it was kept under wraps for the four year period until August 2006. So the four years had passed, Mr. Fiddler, feeling pretty content with himself, decided to remove the hay bales thinking that he would now be able to retroactively apply for planning permission and everything would be good and dandy. Being a local in the area must have been really odd, seeing a massive pile of hay for four years and then a castle suddenly appearing out of nowhere. I mean, what is this? What is this story? Yes, waking up one morning, go into the shops for your local paper, look across the road, you see a blooming castle. And that castle, it has ramparts, it's got ornate turrets, it even has a cannon on the property. We live in a society. And as you can expect, the local council upon finding out, they weren't too happy about this. More importantly, they weren't happy because of the fact that he didn't have planning permission. So the local council decided to serve an enforcement notice on Mr. Fiddler and told him to remove the castle. Mr. Fiddler argued that he was within his legal rights because he had satisfied the four year rule and he was therefore applying retroactively for the planning permission that the council said he didn't have. So uh, of course, he ignored the enforcement notice. This became national news at the time, not only because it was a bit of a crazy situation, but because a situation like this had really never been tested before. Let the battle commence. The fact that Mr. Fiddler ignored the enforcement notice, this matter went to court. And essentially, this matter ran to the appeal court in 2010. The interpretation of the four year rule in this case stated that the four year countdown would only start on the date that construction had completed. Now, because of the fact that Mr. Fiddler had hidden the castle under hay bales, it was decided that at the point he removed the hay bales, that was the time that officially construction on his castle completed. Therefore, the four year countdown only started from the date where he removed the hay bales, not four years before where he hid it underneath them. This, as you can imagine, was a pretty significant blow to Mr. Fiddler's case. And ultimately, the decision was found in favor of the local council. And again, he was ordered to demolish the castle. Now, after all this, you'd think that he would give up. He's had his day in court, he's fought his corner, and unfortunately he lost. So you'd think that that would be the end of it. No, no it's not. Mr. Fiddler again refused to comply with the enforcement order and ignored the second one. This man is not going down without a fight. He is gonna go to the bitter end, just like some medieval shit. In February 2014, Mr. Fiddler applied for retrospective planning permission hoping that after four years now, he would be able to have planning permission. This was refused and ultimately an injunction was served on Mr. Fiddler to remove that castle. Remove it, man, remove the castle. Things were becoming more desperate. So Mr. Fiddler had a few tricks up his sleeve and decided to bring out reasons as to why he couldn't tear down the castle. One of which was the arguments that his home was now inhabited by bats and newts and uh, that they effectively have now moved into the property. <sighs> Mr. Fiddler argued that he would be breaking European laws if he complied with the enforcement notice and tore down the castle. And to prove his point, he had to seek evidence to prove that there were bats roosting in the castle. The guy even got an ecological report conducted from an expert, which proved that yes, there were in fact bats roosting inside his property. You know, come to think of it, maybe he did take inspiration from his younger self and had a room specifically for bats. I mean, I would too. A bat cave. Is Robert Fiddler Bruce Wayne? He found this niche and somewhat questionable law on a website for bats. Uh, he even stated the following in the court case itself. I understand from the website that if there were endangered species threatened by actions of either demolishing the building or the garden wall, that it was a very serious offence. Mr. Fiddler said the survey established the property had all the ideal things where bats are likely to be foraging. It added that the prime bat habitat could be impacted by any demolition process. 
Mr. Fiddler said that he told the council about this and after writing to them, he never got a response. No shit they didn't respond, you're pulling out bat-related laws to try and worm your way out of this situation. <sighs> At one stage, he even tried to argue that he was no longer the legal owner of the property and therefore he couldn't tear it down himself. This didn't really deter the council and they carried on pursuing Mr. Fiddler. And after a long, hard-fought battle, eventually, after a further enforcement notice was given, Mr. Fiddler eventually accepted defeat. And in April 2015, he reluctantly agreed to take down the castle. Of course, he was not too pleased with the outcome and said the following about it. Obviously, it would have been quite difficult to demolish something that you're very proud of, he said. I don't think I have any choice, really. What they're saying now is that if I don't demolish it within 90 days, they can put me in prison. Therefore, you would have thought this is the end of the whole saga. No. No, it's not. Of course it's not. This is Robert Fiddler we're talking about. He again failed to comply with the enforcement notice. And you would have thought after 10 long years of building a castle, hiding it in your farm for four years, and then going through a long legal battle to get to this point, you would have probably admitted defeat. Either that or you would have assumed this whole thing would have been water under the bridge. But no, after Mr. Fiddler ignored a High Court enforcement notice to remove the property by the 24th of June 2015, the council lodged a claim of contempt of court against Mr. Fiddler. Oh, just let it end. My God. And yes, he was found in contempt of court and was given a three month suspended sentence and another enforcement notice. This one had to be done by the 6th of June, 2015. And three days before that deadline, it was finally announced that Mr. Fiddler had begun work taking down the castle. This castle that he fought so long for was finally being torn down, much like Mr. Fiddler's hopes and dreams. And of course, he even went on to comment on the whole ordeal. Tearing down the house is completely pointless. It's completely ridiculous and totally wrong. There's supposed to be a housing shortage, but all they intend on doing is spending thousands of pounds getting one house demolished. They've gone to such lengths to get me to prison. It feels like you're going into the boxing ring on fair terms, but then the bloke you're fighting pulls out a gun and shoots you. Strange way of putting it, but I think I get your point. You may think that this is the end of the line for Mr. Fiddler and his grand designs. Honestly, we might not even be near the end of this whole saga yet, because Mr. Fiddler is adamant that in the future, he will rebuild his castle. This man built a castle. He then hid them under hay bales for four years. Then he went through a 10 year long legal battle. Then after that, he had to demolish the castle. And now he wants to do the whole thing over again. I haven't demolished it. I've dismantled it, said Mr. Fiddler. I have all the pieces sorted. I'm going to get some land and build it again. As of yet, it hasn't been reported where the materials are or where Mr. Fiddler plans on building his castle, but I guess only time will tell. I do really hope that he has a little booklet of how to build your castle 101, like when you get a new Lego set and the booklet tells you step by step how to build your castle, except this is a real castle and it's made of actual brick rather than plastic. You know, just in case he forgets the first time round. One thing that you may be wondering is how much money did the council actually spend in legal fees taking this matter through court? The figure's never been released and it likely never will. But I'm going to have a stab in the dark here and say that it's a fuck ton of money they spent. When researching this topic, I was actually looking through the comments on some articles of what people thought about this. And surprisingly, a lot of people were actually on Mr. Fiddler's side when arguing the fact that he should have been allowed to build his castle. A lot of people agreed with Mr. Fiddler's reasoning and said that the ultimate decision was wrong. However, playing devil's advocate, I do have to see the side of the council because you do have to remember that this castle was built on Greenbelt land. And if they allowed this to happen, it's just a matter of time until there's castles springing up on every corner of the street. Well. All I can say, nice try, nice try man.
If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you have any ideas as to what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Right, well, uh, I'm gonna go build a castle. Uh, I, and let me clarify, I mean in like Minecraft or something, I'm not building a castle in real life. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.